Sabrina Carpenter. Hello. Welcome to the vibe. Thank you for having Can me. Can I get an amen over yeah. here? Yeah. Um, Come on, guys, I, do better. <laughs> I genuinely feel like we're family in a weird you know. way, and I feel like I haven't seen you in a very long time. So I'm really excited to be here. And massive reunion right now. Massive reunion. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy to have you here, and because so much has happened in the past few years, and I want to be. Yep. Well, we're gonna take the pandemic out of it. Yeah. But um, obviously, you released this new album, mm -hmm. and it felt very, very personal to you. It's literally called "Emails That I Can't Send." Mm -hmm. And when I was listening to the album, I feel like you know you wrote you wrote on every single song, right? Mm -hmm. It felt very personal. Like I literally could like pick up on things and I was like, oh, shoot. Like, were there any songs that you kind of felt like you were hesitant to put out? Uh, initially, emails I can't send, like the, the title track of the album, I think was the one that I was the most unsure about putting out because even when I was writing it, I was very unsure about writing it. I almost was like rejecting it as I was doing it, just being like, you know, you get very in your head about the fact that everybody goes through things and you're not special in your, like, suffering. Like, yeah. sometimes it can be like, oh, everybody has worse problems. Like, why am I, you know, kind of sitting here and basking in self-pity and things that have hurt me? And it's like, I, sh I have so much to be grateful for. Like, why am I, why am I not able to, like, stop thinking about these things that have hurt me so much? Uh, and then once I realized that I was like, I've actually never confronted a lot of my pain before and that was like kind of spoken about it yeah and it wasn't for anybody else it was just for myself like it wasn't like I was like they need to know it was really like I need to understand what's going on upstairs because I think I've been avoiding it for a very long time and trying to kind of cover it with some confidence as to like fake myself into thinking I'm okay and and maybe there's some deeper things I should work on in therapy there. <laughs> like, so. yeah, right, like suppressing things. <laughs> totally. Like not, yeah, yeah, Which yeah. I think a lot of people realize they were probably doing in the last few years, suppressing a lot because it was a lot to process and then understand so much of it I still don't understand. Well, what's interesting about you is like, and I think a lot of people can also relate to this. Obviously, it's on a different level because you are an artist and entertainer in, you know, in the entertainment industry. But like obviously before the pandemic too, it was like, you just worked so much. Like you were mm -hmm. like on this, you were just go, 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 go. And did it come from a place of just like, if I just keep going, I don't have to like really be in my head about my thoughts. I can just kind of keep going and moving forward. And I don't have to like deal with what's going on. Definitely has crossed my mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and my therapist. Yeah, no, I think it's definitely been not something intentional, uh, but probably something more subconscious of, yeah, like if you're going, you're so distracted that you can't actually sit there and process what's happening. And especially when people hurt you, you can kind of just be like, whatever, I'm busy. I'm doing I'm doing all this stuff. This, right. You know what I mean? Like it's it's so much easier to just sort of uh, gloss over things. And so to sit down and then process the way you feel and then you realize like your feelings aren't maybe like the best person feelings to have. Like sometimes anger and jealousy and resentment and all those like quote unquote ugly emotions uh, are things that we all have. And, and I just felt like it was, um, it was time to cut the BS because life felt like it was in a really uncertain place. Like we just, there was no guarantees of anything, no guarantees of like not to be so dramatic, but I think it was just the time where I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't have the energy to, to lie to myself. And once I wrote that song, I didn't intend on definitely making it the title of my album at all. Mm -hmm. I think I had had the idea and I was like, if I was a crazy person, maybe I'd do it. And then I became a crazy person like two months later and I was like, I'm going <laughs> to do go. it. Yeah. And then all the everything fe fell into place and all these songs that um, that really kind of started from those initial like things that I was writing to myself in the beginning of the pandemic it all it all fit together and it felt very special. I do want to touch on tornado warnings because oh. you were talking about therapy and yeah. I like to me that line in that song stand, stands out so much that you yeah. were like lying to your therapist and I'm like yeah. that I'm like Sabrina bad that's girl. the one person you're not supposed to lie to but I get it because like obviously we go through things where like you know you're not supposed to be doing something but you're yeah. doing it anyway. Super self aware girl over here. Yeah. Like by the way, like I am the first person to like Tell them, like, you know, people like, I already know what you're going to say, but, like, I I kind of 
needed to experience this because I know it's going to help me grow. And that's like a weird thing that I guess I've been uh, processing. But yeah, that song was way too specific and way too truthful. I have a different therapist now, so... <laughs> Yeah, I that part stood out stood out to me so much, and I was just like, also, you know, uh, and you can answer this however you want, but like, there's a lot of stuff in this album. Like, I feel like every is this all about one specific relationship, or is it multiple relationships? It's about multiple. Like, it's about like I mean, there are so many relationships in my life that have like crossed over over the last few years that I think I was processing, and then of course, like. Sometimes when you sit down, you do have like a, a very specific inspiration or thing that happened to you that just made you feel a certain way. And a lot of the time, the more hurt you are by something or someone, the easier it is to dwell on that thing, you know, and uh, and kind of be able to like stretch it out into like a bunch of different feelings and emotions. But because it was such a complex couple of years in my life and it felt like the album was more of a summary of these things that I've experienced over time, it definitely was um, a multitude of things. Because I do also, you know, uh, because I liked a boy, mm -hmm. I feel like that song, it made me feel something towards you that like, it made me cry because I think, I think a lot of times when stuff's going on in the entertainment industry and we see these headlines and people kind of just get caught up in these stories, but we forget that there's actually people involved in these things mm -hmm. and also there's three sides to every story there's your side there's my side and then there's the truth you know mm -hmm. and I think that oftentimes society we forget that there are actually people behind these stories and I think in that song I I feel like you expressed your truth in such a beautiful way thank you you really really did and Thanks. I could feel that for you and like it just made me feel certain emotions about you that Aww. I think you were trying to achieve and like you really, really did it. Thank you so much. I mean, that's a really, anytime you sit down to write a song, all you, all you can hope for is to like be as honest as possible. But sometimes even in the moments where we think we're being honest, we're still kind of like not fully being ourselves. That was why the idea of when I was writing these emails to myself, those were the times where I was being completely honest because I wasn't thinking about anyone perceiving anything that I felt and I think that's like a really hard thing is like when you think about oh like I'm you know I'm a songwriter and I'm putting out music that people are going to hear and then they're going to interpret it and then they're uh -huh. going to like think things and then they're going to like assume things I didn't want to think about that and I really I took time obviously to like to have to be able to like look back on a situation and be able to laugh about it and kind of sum it up as like, oh, it's all because I like the boy. It sounds so silly, you know? It sounds so silly. And I think that was really where that song came from. Like I kept being like, this is so silly, right? Just because I like the boy. You know, the, the best line, and I'm probably not going to get it exactly right, but the best <laughs> line in that is when you were like, and it all happened after we broke up. Like we were, we were already done. And then like I'm having to relive all this stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, that is too good. I think there's, there's like it's exactly what you said. There's always stuff that people don't even know about or could ever understand. And like you trying to sit there and like, you know, tell them exactly how you feel and who you are. It's like, it's kind of pointless. I've definitely had to learn how to just like giggle at people like, that don't know me trying to tell me who I am. Like, it's just, it's a funny concept, but people will still do it until the end of time for whatever reason. And um, yeah, you just have to like do your own thing. I know it sounds so, like now that I'm saying it here, like forgetting all of the nights that it like obviously yeah, ate well, me alive. Yeah, you're but, human too. Yeah. And it's like so to a such, <laughs> such a degree yeah. that obviously I think everybody experiences it, but it's like you're experiencing it on such like a, on a high volume. And Not so- Not you're already at an age where like, I don't know what I'm doing. You right. know what I mean? And no one at this age knows what they're doing. Totally. And we like make mistakes. We like absolutely are human. We do things that we should not do. We communicate in ways that are not okay. Right, right, right. Because we're figuring out how to be people, like right. good people, hopefully, if that's your goal. It's my goal, um, but not everyone's. And well, I so think the fact that you're in therapy says a lot because like I, I feel the same <laughs> way about therapy. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, like she challenges me and she pushes back. Like she doesn't just like say yes to whatever I'm saying. You know totally. what I mean? I'm like, that's what I need in my life. I've always loved I've always loved conversation. I've always loved communication. I think that was like the main reason why I wanted to write songs and yeah, why you're I wanted a storyteller. to storyteller. Yeah. So I, I think I've always obviously been very team therapy. Uh I didn't 
I didn't um, start therapy until a little bit after kind of the last couple of years. I think that was when I realized I was like, maybe I'm not good. <laughs> maybe I'm not well. It was actually really funny. I was at the Harry Styles show a couple of nights ago and somebody held up a sign and said, like, I skipped therapy to be here. And he like pointed him out and he was like, never skip therapy. And everybody was like, never skip therapy. I was like, yeah. I know. But like also... <laughs> That's where I would lie to my therapist. I'd be like, oh, like I have like a family thing. And then it's like definitely a Harry Styles concert. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I also want to talk about Nonsense because that's your new single. Yeah. And that's the one, I feel like you tailored that song on like different steps or different legs of the tour for yeah. like the different city you were in. Mm -hmm. That was so cute and Thanks. so fun of you. Thank you. It was so fun of me in the moment. I was like, I was just like, what's a cool way to, you know, change up every show? Because I think a lot of the times it's just more fun for me and the band and everybody and involved. And for the audience. Like for, for the you audience to shout especially. out their, their hometown. It's totally. like so fun. Yeah. It worked out because that song initially had so many alternate lines and funny lines that I never got to put in the song that I loved. And that's how it kind of started because I was like, oh, I could just like, I could actually like sing some of those live. And then I was like, oh, wait, I can personalize it. And like every city. And it just became a really fun thing. And yeah, I just, I, I forget that people see things that you do on the internet. So I was doing them, like, the first couple shows, being like, oh, this is so cute, the audience loves it. And then people were like, yo, I saw that you did this in your show that I wasn't at, but I saw it online. And I was like, oh, no, now I have to do it. Oh, at every, every show. show. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Every show. And I did, and I love it. It's so fun. It was really cute. And I love that song. To me, I feel like you, like, are, it's like a rap song. Oh, sick. Thank yeah. you. That's like awesome. Like it's a different Sabrina than I've ever seen. I would never, ever put myself in a category with rappers. <laughs> and so that's a big compliment. Thank you. But it, does, it feels very different from a lot of your other stuff. What was funny is like when I wrote that song too, like there's obviously, there's so much country production to it, but it has like, obviously it doesn't feel like a country song at all. Um, but there's like pedal steel in it that I love. And I think it was just like a very... Uh, it felt like my sense of humor is just so infused throughout that song and through the whole record, but that song specifically was yeah, like, and if you know me. Yeah, especially at the end of it, too. You're totally. like, oh, that's not going to make it in. I was like, oh, that's cute. If you know me, like, that is just my humor to a T, and if you hate it, then I'm so sorry. Then, <laughs> um, But it definitely was, like, a very personal song to me, and so um, it wasn't going to be on the album, I think, because initially I just was like, oh, don't know if it, like... Like when you when you listen to a song like emails I can't send and then you listen to a song like nonsense they're complete opposite songs but I was like but people are versatile and yeah, we totally. forget that like people have like completely different feelings and emotions every single day and you're not just one thing and then I want to talk about I was saying how you were performing nonsense and you changed it up for every stop of the tour mm -hmm. you announced this tour and it sold out literally so fast how first of all I wanted to I wanted to ask you how that felt because I do know like. Coming out of the pandemic, everybody was going on tour. And so yeah. I think a lot of artists were kind of in this place of just like, do people even want to go to shows anymore? But like, clearly, they want to I see mean, you. That was, I mean, that, that's such a, such an incredible moment for so many reasons. One, just because I feel like touring has always been like the love of my life. I, I love being on the road. I love performing songs that I'm really passionate about. And there's just like an energy you can't get anywhere else that you get at a live show. And I think when I announced it, I was more just so excited as opposed to like nervous or unsure. I was just so excited because these songs, I knew that they were going to really be special and translate live differently than they do on the record. And just to have that experience with fans that I've grown up with and then fans that maybe, you know, met me because of this album, like it's such a cool feeling. So I wasn't expecting it, but I was pleasantly surprised and so grateful. And it just made every show I kept saying I was like, the crowds are making these shows so special because they know every word to track 12. And like that to me is so mind blowing, you know, cause I definitely, uh, I definitely couldn't ask them to like do all that. And they bring every, every ounce of their energy to all the shows. So it was really great. Well, I'm really, ha I'm really happy and proud of you Thanks. because I think, I mean, it just goes to show like that was, that was fast. Yeah, that was, it was, it was weird at first. I was just like, wait, like, so that's it. So I'm just, we're good to go. Like every, every show is just sold out sold and out. That's it's it. so special. I mean, it definitely made everybody going into the tour a lot more excited, obviously, just to know that everyone is excited to be there. It's a cool feeling. And so you buttoned up that tour, like that tour, all those stops that you announced, they're done. 
Those are done. Those are done. What is the future like for you, Sabrina Carpenter? The future is busy. Busy. Um, She's busy. and busy. The future is quite busy, uh, which is how I like it. I'm not trying to ignore my feelings. I'm just... uh, (laughs) I'm just actually busy. Um, no, there's there's a lot coming. I can't say too much, but I'm so excited. This like this chapter of my life has felt very, very special and pivotal, and more personal than I've ever felt like with with my fans before. I think that's been um, so incredible. So I think they're going to be pleasantly surprised at everything that's to come. And are you creating space for like personal time and like personal life, or are you still just like focus on work? I have a, f- yes, I, <laughs> it's so funny, but you do have to create space for yeah, it, which set, is, yeah, setting boundaries is, I think is a difficult thing, especially I know you're just like a, you are like a woman that likes to work. And so I think you can, thank you for not calling me a workaholic, but a woman that likes to work because I do think there's a difference. Yeah, for and sure. And so, but I think a lot of people would just like automatically be like workaholic. I'm like, no, I'm not that, but I definitely have always loved doing what I love And I get really, like, weird sometimes when I'm not doing the things that I love. Like, I just feel like there's a part of me that's like, oh, I want to be, I want to be, like, connecting with myself and connecting with other people. Um, And I still, thankfully, I have amazing friends and family that I definitely make time for. So it's, we're balancing. Okay. Figuring it out. We're balancing. Yeah. You give me all the tips, though, because, like, I, (laughs) like... I actually was the same way. Like, okay. I did not have balance. My life was, like, com- very unbalanced. But I'm trying to get better at, like, the balance. What, what would you say is your... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What's your, like, main advice or, like, your best piece of advice for someone in their early 20s? If you could just, like, have one thing that you're like, oh, I wish I knew that, actually. I'm just so curious. I wish I was better at setting boundaries. Okay. I think that I would always try and control things. Like I was a, a, a control freak. And I think it comes from being type A. Mm. Like you think like, okay, if I work really hard and I put all my energy into this, I will control this outcome. And I right. think that I was so focused on that for so long that it made, it drained me so much because you really can't control, can't control. anything. 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 Or like, anyone. At all. Like, not no one. Yeah. And I think once I kind of let that go, it was like a very freeing moment in my life. And that, honestly, it didn't happen until, like, recently. Amazing. So I spent a lot of years trying to, like, control <laughs> every situation. <laughs> yeah. And it was exhausting. And it yeah. drained me. And I think the, the that can take a toll. That's a, actually really great advice. So thank really? you. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's something you have to remind yourself, like... I I think of it sometimes as like I need like post-it note reminders every day to remind me of things that are so obvious that I should just remember, but you forget because they're so obvious. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And just just setting boundaries is a huge one, but also letting go is hard and yeah, hard, uh, but like very but so, freeing. So freeing. So then you just live your life. So important. You don't put expectations on people or relationships. You just kind of. Go. We're just vibing on the vibe. We're like, just vibing on the vibe. Literally, we just have to vibe. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love you so so much. You. Thank you for being here today. We Thank love you. you. Uh, whenever you're in LA and you want to come by, I'm gonna sleep here tonight. Feel yeah. free. You're always welcome. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I just I love you so much. Love you so much. You're the best.